Today, I really want to speak about something that touches us all. And I just had a conversation with my cameraman right there. And I told him that today I'm going to speak on where comes wars amongst you. And he says, Danny, I'm not in a fight. I'm like, lucky you were in a fight. <laughs> so you might think you're not in a fight, but we are all in a fight. Because actually, uh, Paul writes and he says to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. James 4, verse 1, he says, Where come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? But Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Fight the good fight of faith. So there's a good war and there's a bad war. And James <laughs> is a book that everybody has tried to get it out of the Bible because James actually challenges you on your walk with Christ. It's not just a speaking, it's a doing. You know, there's a thing that they say, what you do, is, it speaks so loud, I can't hear what you say. And unfortunately, people want to turn the truth of God into a lie. In other words, you want to make darkness light and light darkness. Now, that was the problem that Israel had. You cannot do that. So if we want to answer this question, and I know James 4 answers it, but you have to go right back to the roots. Where does this dilemma come from that the world is always in wars? Ever since there was history, there was wars. If we go back in time in history, where did wars actually in the Bible start? It is in Genesis 11 verse 1. And the whole world was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east and that they found the plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there and they said one to another, remember one language, they said to everybody was in harmony. Let us make us brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime for water. And they said, let us build us a city and we'll reach heaven. The scary part of this is when God came down, because this is what God said. Behold, the people is one and they have all one language. If we hear one, Israel, he says, behold, Israel, your God is one God. Now, God is one. There is some religions like Hindus that have so many gods that they they easily accept Jesus just as another God. But God is one God. If you go to Isaiah 9, he says, a child is born, a son is given. The government is on his shoulders. That is when he was on the cross, 12, 12, 12 in the old, 12 in the new, because he pulled the disciples, the apostles, 12 out of the 12 tribes, 12, 12. That's 144 and thousand means perfect. A child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be called Everlasting Father. It's all one. So we need to understand what unity is. Now, if we can get this concept of being one, the war will end. Because wars are actually um, what science call it equilibrium. It always wants to balance things. So war is opposing forces, opposing thoughts, opposing languages, opposing visions, and it's everywhere. Every one of us has a battle inside of us because I'm going to take you right back to the roots. Why? We are caught up in a world of wars. Now, <laughs> the world has perfected wars to such a point that wars produce money and currency. So people stir up wars to keep the world currencies going because the world is governed by money. We are not governed by money. That is why the wealth of the wicked eventually have to come to the right realms. But it will only come where there is unity and harmony. So here God comes down at the Tower of Babel and they said, the people is one. And they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. These people are in a fallen state. They are in the realm that is now darkened. 
And God says to them, they are going to do everything that they can ever dream of. And what God did, he stopped them. Oh my word, why did he stop them? Is unity not something that is from God? Being one is something that is from God. Why did he stop them? He stopped them because they were in the wrong realm. Now, if we want to understand this, we have to even back up a little further and go back to what happened. Why are they in a wrong realm? And we find this in Genesis 3 verse 23 after man sinned. Listen to this. This is the most hard soul words ever. And it explains the realms. We need to understand why do we need to understand realms? Because if you understand realms, it's like you're already halfway there. <laughs> you can say, Annalise, but what do you mean now? Now, many times in South Africa, when you drive next to the road, there's these young men training for boxing and they're running next to the road and they run and they run and they, <laughs> you know, it's a big show business. But Paul says, I'm not one beating the air. So um, I think mostly Christianity is like that. We're practicing and we're going to church and we're doing everything, but we're beating the air because we do not what we what we're hitting. So the show is not the real thing. It's to be in the ring. That's the real thing where, where you really face the enemy. So exercising and the real thing <laughs> is is quite different. And you can beat the air as much as you want to. You might build muscles, but it doesn't mean you're getting the opponent. And this is very important because if you do not understand times and seasons and realms, you might have the wrong opponent too. So we are fighting many times a fight that is not ours. We have a fight, but it's a good fight of faith. It's not a fight that's going to leave us despondent, broken, bankrupt and disillusioned. No, this is a good fight of faith. Paul ran that fight. He said, I ran my race. I kept the faith. He fought that fight. It's the good fight of faith. Now, I want to bring you to understanding the realms and what fight and what battle you are fighting. So today is actually very important. He says in verse 23 in Genesis 3, Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth, this is Adam, from the garden. God's idea was a garden, an enclosed area. It was his bride. It was east. This is the first thing he did. It was in Eden. It was in God's pleasure. Now God sent man forth away from that. And now he must till the ground. All he had to do is keep the garden. Now he's got to till the ground. From whence he was taken. When the curse came upon man, he said, from dust you are to dust you go back. So you've got to get your food from the very place that you came from, dust. And he said to Satan, you will sail on the earth. You will eat dust, meaning death. So he drove man out and he placed at the east of the garden a cherubim and it had a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the man from the tree of life. Oh my word, is the tree of life not something good? Why did God keep man from the tree of life? Is unity not something good? Why did God smash the unity and he called it Bible confusion? Now to understand this, we really, really, really have to go back right to the beginning. What happened right in the beginning? And we pick it up in John 1, not Genesis 1. The first verse chronologically is John 1. 